Nobody is talking about potassium deficiency because everyone is focused on sodium and everyone's focused on magnesium. And of course, it's absolutely important and necessary. But potassium deficiency, it's a problem that can go completely and noticed. But also remember that there are differences in between being deficient and there is a difference when you're insufficient. Symptoms such as having weaknesses, such as having blood pressure problems, might be because of a deficiency in potassium. Let's picture out this mug. I have this mug and I can have it full. I can have it over here and that if I have it almost empty, it's insufficient. When it's completely deficient, it's when it's completely empty. So we need to remember there is a big difference when I have an insufficiency and when I have a deficiency. We can start having insufficiencies in potassium, the same thing as happens with magnesium, and not having any symptom or thinking that I don't have any symptom and being completely unnoticed. So we're going to see and we're going to go through the symptoms, through all the consequences, through all the things in which why potassium is absolutely significant to our health or to cause disease. Then the excess of potassium is a problem. So this is something that we need to address in a very careful and a very scientific way. Let's remember why potassium is important. Potassium is important because it's a very crucial and again necessary in the body. The functions may include everything related with the functioning of the muscles, not only with the muscle, with the skeletal muscle, but also with the heart. Potassium is necessary for the contraction, is necessary for every single function of the heart, not only the contraction, but also the rhythm. Heart rhythm, heart balance, it's potassium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, they're all involved, especially potassium is very necessary. It is also important for the maintenance of fluid in the body. Let's remember that fluids need to go from when you ingest them, then they need to go into your blood, then they go out from the blood, from the blood vessel, they go out and they're within cells and then they need to go into the cell. When we have all those three compartments with the right amount of fluid, then we have good hydration. Before that, we don't. Potassium is necessary for the stability of the cell membrane, for the stability of the movement of fluid in and out from the cell. We don't have this, we don't have good hydration. This is critical. So people that have problems with insufficient potassium, they are going to have conditions that might lead to hypertension. This is also necessary for nerve transmission. Nerve transmission in central nervous system, but also peripheral nervous system, so people might end up having problems, mental problems. They can start being kind of dizzy, but they can also have cramps. They can also have tingles throughout all the body, and this could be a problem for a lot of persons. The other thing is this is necessary for the metabolism, but also all the production of protein, protein in within my genes, for the production of the protein that they have to produce, but also for producing the other 100,000 proteins that are not made by our genes, but we ingest the right amount of amino acids and then they build up the chain that is going to be eventually a protein. In those processes, potassium is an intermediate factor for all these things to happen in a right way. So potassium deficiency can have adverse effects in health, such as increased blood pressure, muscle weakness, fatigue, this, the impact that this can have in the cardiovascular system, again, they can go from irregular heartbeat, they can go to things that we're going to find when you perform an EKG, and then you can start seeing that there are patterns that are, makes us think as physicians that people might have a deficiency in potassium. The muscle can get damaged, but even when you are too deficient in potassium, your heart can stop. When we have changes in fluid and hydration, we can have all the things related by being dehydrated, such as having bruxism, such as having headaches, such as having people get dizzy, people get hungry, people get headaches, people get angry because they're dehydrated and they don't know them because this imbalances can have also mental manifestations. So we need to remember that we need to take the adequate amount of water but the adequate amount also of sodium, potassium, and magnesium, best if we do it in our diet. That's the best thing. And in the end, I'm going to tell you which are going to be those sources 
from where you are going to take the right amount of potassium. But there are people that have higher risk factors for this. The main cause for not ingesting the right amount of potassium is when we have the classic standard American diet. When people have a diet that it's high in ultra processed food, that's going to be for sure the number one cause for not getting enough potassium in your diet. But also there are people that have special groups, vulnerable groups that have conditions such as people that have kidney disease, people that has uh, that use medications such as diuretics. Diabetic patients also have an increased loss of potassium, but also people that have cardiovascular disease or even in older adults. Why? Because they have some of these conditions, plus they don't ingest the right amount of potassium in their diet. But you can have symptoms, but just because you have symptoms, are you going to run and get from Amazon the first potassium supplement that you're going to find? No. The best way that you can address if you have a potassium deficiency, of course, symptoms can show something, but it's quite easy to go and measure in your blood if you have a potassium deficiency because the level that the body keeps of potassium, it's very, very small. And the body is very smart on keeping that level in that in the maintenance in between those levels the right amount is between 3.5 and 5.5 but if we ingest more we have problems if we lack of potassium we have problems that's why you need to avoid the self-medication you need to avoid taking large amounts of potassium without knowing which could be the problem if you're taking a supplement that has i don't know 50 milligrams of potassium 70, 100, nothing is going to happen if you take it once a day. Why? Because you need 2600 milligrams of potassium in a day. That's what you are going to get from your diet. But people start taking 500 milligrams three times a day or something like that. Just because they think they might be deficient in potassium, then they have a problem. They can end up having an excess in potassium and that can be also lethal. Not only the deficiency might be lethal, but the excess of potassium might also be lethal. So we need to remember that these symptoms of being weak, of having tingles, of having all our problems with the blood pressure that were not maybe before, but maybe you notice that when you take certain foods or cer certain things, they go away. This might be probably because of something in your diet. So which is the best way that you can do that you can start doing something about potassium is just by ingesting the right amount in the right foods, which are going to be potassium rich sources that you can include in your diet. The best thing you can ingest is not just bananas. Bananas are great, but the best thing that you can ingest, it's leafy green vegetables, spinach, kale, arugula, lettuce, different leafy greens, especially if they're dark leafy greens, as darker as they get, they're going to be higher in potassium. Also, all the other things, fruits, bananas, but also avocados, kiwis, oranges, peaches, pomegranates, some dried fruits, which are very high in potassium. Legumes, beans, chickpeas, lentils, nuts and seeds such as pistachios, almonds, walnuts, or other tubers such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, or beets could be something that you could start using as a daily basis. So remember, which is the best thing that you can do? Bring these foods into your diet. When you see these foods are not only rich in potassium, they're also rich in fiber. And we need to remember the high importance of getting fiber in our diet. If you think that you might have a deficiency, try to see how incorporating these foods might start ameliorating or getting the symptoms to go away. And then you can see, hmm, probably I had a potassium deficiency. I'm getting cramps, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling tingles. I'm going to eat a banana and some spinach and I'm gonna see what happens. Oh, they go away, perfect. Go and talk to your physician. Maybe you have a potassium deficiency. But if you think that if you have a problem, go and talk to your physician or go to the ED and you might have a blood test done. And then we as physicians can address if you really have a deficiency that we have to start treating in the hospital or 
we're going to give you a supplement, but please don't do it on your own. And let's remember that when we, what we get with this information is that we grow the community that in which we are getting all the knowledge to get to be in charge of our health. So this is the only thing that we want to make through this channel and is to build a community. Remember that there are ways in which we can start growing and we have this community getting better every day. And it's just by sharing the video with your contacts and also remember to subscribe to the channel. It's not about followers. It's about that when you subscribe and when you hit the bell, you are going to be the first one to be notified. When you get this, you are going to keep on growing knowledge to be in charge of your health. And that's the only purpose. That's the only thing that I want to do for you and for all the community. And this is the best way. So if you think you can do that, thank you. If not, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.